ValveTime.net. Hi, and welcome to the Valve Time News for August 11th, 2015. Each week, we bring you the biggest talking points regarding Valve and the community. With it being the biggest week in the Dota 2 calendar, it's no surprise that almost all of our recent news revolves around the International 2015, which headed to Key Arena on Monday, August 3rd. As usual, Valve's Gabe Newell opened the event on Monday, once again reiterating the development team's love for the game before handing over to a few presentations, including one recapping the history of the International since its inception in 2011 and another previewing a variety of songs from the Dota 2 soundtrack as played by a live orchestra with Valve's Tim Larkin conducting. Six full days of competition then began, continuing with various single and best of three matches across the upper and lower bracket until Saturday evening when the grand finals got underway. The best of five finals concluded in a 3-1 victory by Evil Geniuses over C-Deck, convincingly securing the 6.6 .6 million first place prize. While Evil Genius's strength was never underestimated, it was interesting to see them dominantly overcome C-Deck in the finals only a day after being pushed into the lower brackets by them during a 2-0 matchup. In the final few days of the event, the prize pool for TI5 surpassed 18 million, jumping at least a few hundred thousand dollars above it by the time the grand final concluded. With millions of eyes on the event watching so much high-level play across a huge number of different platforms, the International once again proved just how large, impactful, and fun esporting events can be. Despite being the largest eSporting tournament by quite a significant margin, it's never all about the serious competition, as the annual All-Star match on Thursday evening once again saw a variety of players from various teams compete to win the fabled cheese. This time, however, the event wasn't restricted to a simple 5v5 like previous years, as this All-Star match previewed a brand new 10 vs 10 custom game mode Valve will release into the Reborn beta sometime next week. The update will also allow custom games to go all the way up to a total of 24 players. The All-Star event itself was an absolute blast, as Casey and Team Captain Schwan and No-Tail also randomly selected 10 extra players from the crowd at Key Arena with a seemingly innocent Pudge cosplayer later revealed as Navi's Dendi. With countless jokes, weird picks, and friendly competition, it was by far and away the most enjoyable and hectic All-Star match to date, and we highly, highly recommend you all check it out. Prior to the start of the All-Star event, the analyst panel revealed the five winning videos for the Dota 2 short film contest. The winning videos include The Calling by Lozenger, Enigma's Exasperation by Max of S2D, Low Priority Story by W200ME, Tower Destroyers Hidden Talent by Big Green Pepper, and The Sacrifice by Deviant Pictures Films. With each video lasting only a minute, there's really no excuse for not checking them out if you're a fan of Dota or amazingly well-produced short films. With so many high-quality films displaying such a wide variety of contrasting themes and concepts, we can hardly blame Valve for upping the size of the contest from one winner to five. We would just like to find out whether the initial 20 grand prize pool still stands or whether it has been increased. Links to all of the five winning videos will be made available in the video description, so make sure to check them out at the end of this episode. The fourth competition to take place this week occurred between Queen of Pain and Zeus in the final part of this year's Arcana Showdown. After months of community voting, Zeus was announced as the ultimate victor during Friday's event, securing him as the next hero to receive an Arcana quality item set, likely coming up in the next few months. If Phantom Assassin's victory last year is anything to go off, we can expect to see Zeus's Arcana released alongside a major update sometime in quarter four of this year, likely around October or November. This week wasn't all about Dota 2, however, as it was recently revealed that Valve's Yasser Malaika would lead a talk at GDC Europe focusing around the continuing development of virtual reality. The talk, entitled Interaction Design in VR, The Rules Have Changed, again, took place on Tuesday, August 4th at 11.15am to designers and developers in attendance, and discussed how virtual reality devices such as the HTC Vive promote the creation of non-traditional human-computer interaction, particularly in relation to gameplay experiences. While we haven't had a chance to check out the talk's recordings as of yet, a video recording will be made available on the GDC Vault sometime in the next two to four weeks for those looking to check it out. And that brings us to the end of another Dota-centric week of Valve news. Before you comment, to state the obvious, why not use that energy to subscribe to our YouTube channel and to follow us on Facebook, Twitter, and Twitch TV to stay up to date with all the latest regarding both Dota and all of Valve's other games and products. Once you're done, be sure to head on over to sign up on the Valve Time community forums to complain about how biased we are towards Dota 2. Thanks for watching and bye for now.